Welcome to Gary Clark Tech and a brand new series in which we're going to have a look at a symphony component called Messenger. And more to the point, we're going to have a look at something which Messenger can do for us, and that is to run code asynchronously, i.e. we'll have processes which run in the background while the rest of our code works. So you might have something which requires a lot of heavy processing and takes a long time to complete. Instead of your application having to wait for that process to complete, it will go on a queue, be processed in the background asynchronously while the rest of your code is running. And so you can hand the application back to the client, back to the user, so they can continue their tasks while that process is being completed. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. To give you an idea of how this works, I've knocked up a basic application here. It's just for demo purposes, it's not anything like a finished product, but it will demonstrate the problem that we are trying to solve. So it's just a stocks app where you can go and have a browse of stocks, choose ones that you want to buy and then you can purchase them at a set price or at the current price and in a chosen quantity. When you select to buy at this price, then a few things need to happen. First off, you have your data processes, recording the order, deducting one account, crediting another, and all that typical stuff. In addition to that, it will generate a contract note, and we're gonna do that in PDF format. And generating and writing PDFs can be a heavy process, which takes a long time. But in addition to that, we're also going to email the contract note to the purchaser. And again, sending emails can take quite a long time. So these are things which I would like to try and handle asynchronously, i.e. in the background. Let's run this so that you can see the problem with your own eyes. So if I click buy at this price, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so five seconds it took to process that. And most of the processing there, I can tell you, was with uh, writing the PDF and sending the email. So what we want to do is, after the data has all been recorded and uh, the transaction can be made, we've done the checks, then we want to take the processing of the PDF and the sending of the email, put that onto a message queue where it can run asynchronously and just hand the uh, browser straight back to the user. Let's have a quick look at what that process produced. So here are my emails and as you can see there is an attachment. Let's go and have a look at this. Okay and so it's just a basic PDF contract note for order 123456. Tells me what I've bought, what the fees are and a total purchase price. Something important which I should point out here is that the main objective is not to create a shiny, all singing, all dancing application. The objective is to learn as much as possible about Messenger and the synchronous message queues. So how they work, how they should be configured, how to use them efficiently and avoid common errors. Because by having asynchronous tasks running, you're introducing extra complexity which can make it difficult to have complete control of your application. Another thing that I'll state is that I'm open to ideas. For example, in order to demonstrate multiple queues with different priorities, I'll need to have another process to demo. So maybe one where you can sell your stocks back or something like that. Feel free to share your thoughts, any ideas you might have. And there are two other goals for this course. One of these is to incorporate MongoDB for data storage mainly just to try something different and new. I've done a lot of stuff which uses Doctrine with relational databases, so let's keep mixing it up. I've started using MongoDB in the day job, so this will give me an opportunity to learn more about it while teaching others, and quite likely learn from the people that watch this series. I learn so much from people that watch these videos. It's such a cool experience. And the third goal is to promote and encourage contribution. So I get a lot of comments with ideas and suggested improvements, which I totally welcome. And I've just thought, you know what, why not just encourage people to send pull requests and we'll build it together. Contributing to open source has massive value. And in the next video, I'll show you how you can fork the repo and how to make pull requests. So by the fact that you're still here, I presume you're still interested, I think this one's going to be really cool. We're going to be doing a bit of setup in the first couple of videos to get some of the front end stuff running, but once we get into the messenger stuff and the asynchronous stuff, it's going to be really interesting. We're going to learn a lot of cool stuff together. Let's make a start. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. 
And also, if you're interested in my full-length courses, then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech. I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description.